All right. On to the next pick here. Got 108. Picking for Hurst so good because he has Hayden Hurst. Uh, and also a Gamecock fan. Uh, Big Co, you're up. What do you got? Well, Hurst so good. He is <laughs> Shout out to Ross. Not the worst team name we got going on. Uh, he was a he's a Gamecock, and he probably started off. Does, does he have Hayden Hurst on his IR spot somewhere? Or it's on the taxi, taxi squad. There? I thought he had Hurst on his team. Um, you know he's uh, I'm as this mock, obviously mock drafts going on. Players are falling off the board. Hawkinson goes. It is a tight end premium league. He's got Kyle Rudolph, Ricky Seals Jones, who neither one of those guys had great years. Kyle Rudolph had a decent year, better the year before. Touchdown monster the year before. New quarterback comes in. Throws it to Diggs and uh, Thielen all over the place. Kind of forgets about Kyle Rudolph, if you will, a little bit. And Ricky Seals Jones got a little old chemistry with uh, Kyler Murray from Texas A&M <laughs> days. I like they that. don't they don't like the tight end in that air raid though. I like four it. wide receivers. Um, if you didn't catch that, Ricky Seals Jones and and Kyler Murray went to school together. I think so, they were roommates at Texas A&M. Think they were roommates. Ricky Seals Jones stock through the roof. <laughs> stock up, Ricky Seals Jones Bef- before wide. <laughs> so I'll like to cut out a bag here as I start to break down this team. I took Noah Fant. That's what we were waiting for. We All were, right. Usually you say the pick. Okay. And then go through the Well, team. you got Hurst so good. It's a good team name. Gamecock. Had to bring that all around. He does have Hayden Hurst on his team. Who uh you say Gamecock, you're building five minutes into a big coat segment. Yeah, you should have left that part out. Um I went Noah Fant here right after Hawk and I it wouldn't It's a good pick. It's a good pick. Yeah, woo. yeah. Woo. Woo. yeah. Woo. All right. Woo. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Love that when there's like a, a cornerback that nobody's ever heard <laughs> of and they zoom in on the fans in the draft. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like what? You know, you don't know who that is. Um so Fant for PPR fantasy scoring wise could completely dominate Hawkinson in the next couple years. And I don't think and if that would surprise you, then you shouldn't be surprised. Let me just put that mm-hmm. out there right now. A lot of people ADP, rookie draft ADP, throw it out the window. And that's what over the last couple of uh, days, and especially starting on Saturday when all the FFPC rookie drafts started out, our community page was blowing up. People, you know, posting draft boards, asking questions, this and that. Like, and one of the guys said, "Hey, just this rookie draft ADP, especially after pick four, you know, yeah. after the three running backs and Harry, just throw the ADP out it's the all, window." It's Wait, all up and down. <laughs> <laughs> so. If you like if you like Fant and you're sitting there at one eight in the draft or one seven or one six and Hawk's still on the board or whatever, and you're like, Well, I can't take Fant because Hawk's still here or whatever, take whoever you want. Fant goes to a system, goes to a quarterback. Now that you can say, Well, I don't know how long Flacco's big gonna be the quarterback, but Flacco throws it to tight ends. Fant's a first yeah, round he, rookie pick. Well Flacco hasn't necessarily had like too many big tight end seasons. He had one with Pitta, but he'll. It's because he really hasn't had one tight end. He'll mix it around to the tight ends, and he's not scared to throw it to the tight Pitt, end. Pitta sure. did some work though. Pitta did do some work. Pitt was if Pitta's hip would have held together, he, my man was doing work. Pour one out for Pitta's hip. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I I think that I think that Fant comes into the league here. Obviously, two years ago he would have been the no, he was the number one Devi tight end, and then Hawkinson came along and jumped him. And well, and most people are putting Hawkinson in front of Fant because at the end of the year, Iowa had it that way, and there's no way it could be any other. Sure, but way. if you if you could, yeah, you want to tea leave it and read a couple of articles. Fant and the coaching staff weren't exactly seeing eye to eye because of Hawkinson's, you know, right. surgeons. And then Fant was like, they didn't have a lot of good players, so they're sure. trying to get Hawkinson and Fant. Right, and then right. Fant and, and went down, and Hawkinson went up. Stop exactly. What, what in, what's interesting is the snap counts for both those players in 2018. Uh, Fant had 491 snaps. Hawkinson was on the field for 787. The, the blocking. He's not coming off the field. One play. Well, Fant's not a terrible blocker, but he's not Fant Hawkinson. doesn't get enough credit. I yeah, feel I, like. I, I agree. Underrated, I would say. I, I can't disagree. He's I'm definitely just not a liability. I mean, he's, he's not a top 10 draft pick because he's on the field every play for and going to give you that Gronk level blocking. And Hawkinson gives you that Gronk level. Like Casey said, Gronk doesn't get it. His, his offensive prowess gives you so much. Nobody gives Gronk the, 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 the respect he deserves for his blocking. And that's what gets you Dr- Hawkinson's draft capital there in the top of the top and, 10. And the hands. That's really the knock. 
in the difference between the biggest difference between the two guys are are are, are the hands. Yeah. Well, I mean Drops are drops, you know. Sometimes when he catches touchdowns, you'll forget about a drop real quick. So he, he dropped 11, 11 balls on eighty catchable balls the last two seasons. So that's a fifty nine and a half percent catch rate, as opposed to seventy four percent with Hawk. And okay. and the thing is, I mean, he makes a lot of good plays, but you see that ball like moving when he's catching it. You know, he just needs to. She needs to tighten that thing up a little bit. Needs to catch it. Needs to needs to uh, stick get stickums. Get some stickums. Right. So I mean the team the team here for for my man here Hurst so good. He's got a couple of decent running backs. Could have used a wide receiver here, but I I thought the asset of Fant was one of those things where this wide receiver core for this rookie draft is pretty much loaded in through the second round, and whether or not he trades up from the third round and gets two wide receivers. He could use some wide receivers. I felt like once Fant was off the board, then the, hey, I'll give you a first-round pick next year for this pick kind of goes out the window yeah. in my mind. So, like, once once Hawkinson and Fant are off the board in your rookie draft, and assuming that they went off the board after the first, you know, five or six guys that you assume go up there, first four, the top four and that type of stuff, I felt like there's a tear break. So just from asset, because you we've said in previous uh, picks, you can start three tight ends in this league. It's mm-hmm. an open flat, lot of flexes. Yeah, and two two running backs, two wide receivers, a tight end, and a bunch of flexes. So yeah. and it's and it's tight end premium. So I felt like Fant first of all would come in and have a shot at being his top PPR scorer, depending on Kyle Rudolph and what happens with him in the Vikings now, and it give you another spot to a plug in a starter. B, yeah. at least have a, a tight end that everybody loves. Most people love his asset value in a dynasty rookie draft moving forward. Dynasty going forward, I felt like Fant was just a safe pick that, for, first of all, you might be able to start sooner than later, and it's normally not going to go down. Yeah, so I mean, this guy, uh, Hurst so good, has a, a decent team. He's got Cam and Mitch at the top here. Um, he's got Chris Carson. Uh, he has Melvin Gordon. He has Jordan Howard, which I know some people aren't that excited about, but a decent depth piece. He has Aaron Jones in there, and then he's got LaShawn McCoy and TJ Yeldon. So, I mean, Carlos Hyde. You know, not the most outstanding ever, but a decent group of running backs there. And uh, then the receivers are Edelman, which got to love Edelman week in, week out. Sure. Dontrell Inman, who just signed with the uh, Patriots. Patriots. So, you know, good good little uptick for him there, who's usually more of a week 13 guy. Yeah. Um, Jarvis Landry, Sterling Shepard got a huge boost, and then Thielen down there. So the receiving core is not terrible. It's, he's ready to go in the receiver area. So even if you would have drafted like a Paris Campbell for this team, which, I you know, we'll get to him in a second, but I, I don't think he's going to necessarily come in and give you a ton of start ability right off the rip and feel super comfortable about it. So and you could have went Mecole Hardman, but same deal. Like who the hell knows what's going to happen there? But so I, you know, Fant could come in and give you some some potential startability right away on this team. That's what I was thinking. Right, and I'm 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 agreeing with you. Yeah, yeah I um, got to agree as well. I I I I can't really argue too much if you want to take Fant over Hawkinson. I I happen to go Hawk, but I I completely understand the Fant. They're they're just different tight ends. I mean. Uh, Fant looks like a wide receiver out there. He's, mm-hmm. he's basically a wide receiver. He's he's Hawk's pretty athletic, but Fant's in the 98th percentile spark score. And, I mean, the, the, the change of direction is ridiculous. He's, everything is precise. He can get behind defenses for big plays. He's known for having a good attitude. Wants to be an orthopedic surgeon when he's done playing football. So a lot of things to like about him. You got Flacco there for, I don't know if he's going to play the whole year, but he likes I would, I would imagine he's playing the whole year unless he gets hurt. If Roto Hat World or he, has anything or to say just, about it, or they're just terrible, and Vic Fangio is the, de- the the head coach of that team, and they got some defensive pieces, so I bet they'll be in a whole bunch of games. Yeah. I like it. Um, but as far as Fant and Hawkinson go, like on that last team on on Big Co's team on Don't Be Last, like I could see taking Hawkinson over Fant on this team. I could see if you were down to two tight ends, maybe I might want to take Fant over Hawkinson. Because like you said, I want maybe a guy who can, I feel a little bit more comfortable potentially week in, week out, maybe score having a bigger fantasy impact from year one. I think I like Hawkinson. I like both of these guys just fine. I don't think you can really go wrong either way. But I think if you want immediate impact, I think Fant's uh, a guy that, that I would be looking for to put on my team. I just think they don't. They don't really necessarily. I mean, obviously, you got Cortland Sutton, who I like a lot, and I like Deshaun Hamilton a good bit, and Emmanuel Sanders 
God bless his soul. I hope he comes back and he's anywhere near what he once was. But I mean, sure. at the end of the day, you don't you don't have any real proven weapons, and you have a, a quarterback who does isn't won't hesitate to throw it to a tight end, right. especially one that's less athletic. And then on top of this, you stack on the coordinator that they brought in here, who is a first year coordinator, but Rich Scrang. Grello, I think is how you pronounce his name. He's a Shanahan guy. He's been with Shanahan since uh, he was in Atlanta. He came in and they were doing a bunch of grunt work for offensive line stuff, but he was a previous kind of uh, head coach and, and uh, offensive coordinator in college, took a pay cut to come learn from Shanahan and has been with Shanahan since he's been in uh, Atlanta. Went over to Shan Shanahan was like, I'm taking this guy with me. I want him to be my quarterback's coach. I could see already see how good he is at this. And it's great that he's, you know, getting some offensive line experience here and figuring that out. It's just going to add to his game. And he right. was super bummed to lose him. But basically, like, you know, he deserves it. And they, they're getting a hell of a coach. So what you're saying is he's, he saw the, the X's and O's and the development of Kittle. Well, so, yeah, so you're getting you're getting a guy in Shanahan and the Shanahans who put an emphasis on having a mismatch at a tight end position. Yep. Like you go all the way back to the Redskins days when Kyle Shanahan was there with his dad. First year there, they had Chris Cooley, who had 126 targets the first year. Yeah. Um, now, the next year, Cooley gets hurt and uh, what's his name? Uh, Fred Davis, old Fred Davis comes in, who's you know, a little little longer in the tooth at that point has 88 targets and then you know next if, year it falls apart a little bit and if then you they, guys are wondering that noise was paper from casey's notepad <laughs> and he just hits you with a fred davis reference <laughs> after the notepad. chris cooley reference <laughs> and he's we got shanko we got cooley and he's left-handed so this is a top top spiral notepad which is the the i like the, yellow a, legal a breakthrough yeah. a yellow legal pad when you got to go top you got to go top you, spiral if you're left-handed if you're wondering if you don't you get about the preparation for this show jesus i like the left i like the uh, legal uh My, there it is that's yellow <laughs> legal pad right there <laughs> top spiral maybe not the best for the environment but yeesh but he went <laughs> save a tree he went Fred Davis reference. So on Fred you. Davis had 88 targets the year at, uh, in 2011, and then uh, things Cooley had couldn't get right, and they were looking for a new tight end. And then the, uh, Shanahan's last year there, they they he picked up Jordan Reed. And anybody Reed, heard, ever heard of Jordan Reed? Yeah, had a nice season, but it was RG 3s kind of coming out party, so it wasn't like an outstanding tight end season, but still had a pretty strong rookie season. And then he goes to Atlanta, gets I think eight. I think um, Jacob Tammy the first year. He old Jacob Tammy, old Peyton Manning's old. Mm -hmm. guy gets uh i believe 88 targets down there the first year so then they bring in austin hooper the next year um and they kind of split roles a little bit so you, he, Ma he's many, going after any austin he's hooper going after last a year. uh he's going after a tight end once he gets around and once the little mismatch and then queue up san francisco uh they take kittle you know right off over uh over there once Shanahan gets to town and yeah they didn't have anybody there kind of like an Ebron situation by the end of last year but and then he shows up but, in Denver and they take but, a tight end in the first round but Kittle did his thing so then yeah so Scran Gallo goes over there and they obviously they needed a tight end but they go ahead and they draft Noah Fant and I think by trading back too I think that's going to be a guy who they're going to kind of plan their mismatches around and he's seen kind of how Shanahan likes to do it and what Shanahan wants to do and I think this is a you know we'll see if this guy can actually hack it as a coordinator it's jury's still out but I like connecting some dots here of you know Shanahan's been a guy who likes to win with a mismatch at tight end and that's they just drafted a huge mismatch in Noah Fant and the, the position's really wide open Jake Butts had like five ACL tears now they will probably run some 12 personnel and Jake Butts a great inline tight end so he doesn't necessarily need to come out with great athleticism and but Jake Butt was a great blocker so they got a nice two tight end set if Jake Butt can be healthy by the time they uh everything rolls around but I really like the outlook of Noah Fant right off the rip I do think Again, like if you're looking for the value increase right away, I think Fant's value increase is going to go up a little faster than Hawkinson's. Now, there'll be plenty of people who are like, well, we're just I'm still in on Hawkinson. I'm just waiting. But Fant could get out there right away after connecting all these dots for you and, and potentially get a huge uptick in value right off the rip if he if he could be healthy. I like that a lot. I mean, if you think if you pick if you if you picture where you want Hawk to go, obviously with the elite blocking and just the physicalness of his game, then you say, all right, well, maybe crazy. I thought I, I, you know, shook my head last week at Jay Wayne when he said DK Metcalf and Calvin Johnson in the same 
breath. But the craziness is, all right, well, maybe maybe Hawkinson could maybe ascend. We didn't. Gronk wasn't Gronk before Gronk became Gronk, right? So everybody is uh, obviously all the good players are outliers, like you like to say, Casey. And I think that's a brilliant point on you. So Hawk probably never becomes an, a Hall of Famer, you know, one percent of the one percent. But I can see that. But the way you lay it out there for Fant, it's just like, all right, well, why can't Fant do what Kill did? You know, right. he's obviously just as athletic, and it's right there for him to be taken. I like what you said, like the. Wide receiver staff for the Broncos on paper they don't scare you, but they do do they do do. And I like them. I, they I do love do I like do do. Them. They do do some do, very do. specific things. Yeah. And Cortland Sutton is a monster on the outside physically that you have to defend because you can't just let him get the ball thrown up there without some pretty good defense to figure out how to stop that. And I've told you guys last year in the preseason after seeing Deshaun Hamilton run around in the preseason, I was like, that dude's an NFL slot receiver mm -hmm. for sure. He just rode the co he just was in the shadow of Emmanuel Sanders all year and he did exactly what I thought he would do when Sanders got hurt he showed you that he's an NFL slot receiver and I hope like you said I hope Sanders comes back but those guys at least are product they 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 don't scare you but they better you got to defend them yeah you know D them up and now but they're you all plug in fan to that and it just it's a yeah. dynamic where I think it'll be greater that you know the sum is better than the individual parts kind of thing right you put them all together and it and it, it could be nasty for fan and sooner than later than Hawk I agree with that too all right. You got anything else, Jay Wayne? No, I'm I'm good to go. I guess real quick, without opening up another can of worms, you going Hawkins Center fan? Well, I just kind of laid it out there. Like I, I think for the most part, if if I can like on Big Coast team, if you can wait, I don't mind picking Hawkinson and kind of being able to wait on my guy. Not that I don't think Hawkinson will have some decent games, but I think All right, Twitter poll. Hawkins Center fan, A or B. I mean, I I guess I'll take fan. <laughs> All right, what are you doing, Miko? It's real close. I I think it comes down to how your team's built and how you can ah, usher, usher them the, in. Take the take take your favorite guy. Yeah, today I'm taking Hawk and a lot and oh. a, and I'll take Hawkinson long term and and short term because today before they play a game I'll get more trade value out of Hawkinson than Fant. But once they get on the field week one, that could easily swap, which is all Casey's saying. All right. Well, we're going long term here tonight, but in the short term we're gonna take a quick break and we'll be back with pick one nine nine.